The Landscape of Australia Australia has rightly been named the Land of the Dawning. Wrapped in the mist of early morning, her history looms vague and gigantic. The lonely horseman riding between the moonlight and the day sees vast shadows creeping across the shelterless and silent plains. Hears the strange noises in the primeval forest, where flourishes a vegetation long dead in other lands and feels, despite his fortune, that the trim utilitarian civilization which bred him shrinks into insignificance beside the contemptuous grandeur of the forest, and ranges covail with an age in which European scientists have cradled his own race. There is a poem in every form of tree or flower, but the poetry which lives in the trees and flowers of Australia differs from those of other countries. Europe is the home of nightly song, of bright deeds and clear morning thought. Asia sinks beneath the weighty recollections of her past magnificence, as the sooty sinks jewel-burdened upon the corpse of dread grandeur, destructive even in its death. America swiftly hurries on her way, rapid, glittering, insatiable, even as one of her giant waterfalls. From the jungles of Africa, and the creeper tangled groves of the islands of the south arise from the glowing hearts of a thousand flowers, heavy and intoxicating odours, the upas poison which dwells in barbaric sensuality. In Australia alone is to be found the grotesque, the weird, the strange scribblings of a nature learning how to write. Some see no beauty in our trees without shade, or our flowers without perfume, our birds who cannot fly, and our beasts who have not yet learned to walk on all fours. But the dweller in the wilderness acknowledges the subtle charm of this fantastic land of monstrosities. He becomes familiar with the beauty of loneliness. Whispered to by the myriad tongues of the wilderness, he learns the language of the barren and the uncouth, and can read the hieroglyphics of the haggard gum trees blown into odd shapes, distorted with fierce hot winds, or cramped with cold nights, when the southern cross freezes in a cloudless sky of icy blue. The phantasmarigma of that wild dreamland termed the bush interprets itself, and the poet of our desolation begins to comprehend why free Esau loved his heritage of desert sand better than all the bountiful riches of Egypt.